Hello everybody, and welcome back once again to Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 with King Johan, the drunken monk of England. <laughs> right, okay, I... It was kind of weird because I was setting myself up for this session and I sat down, I put all my lights on, put my webcam on, put my lights on at the back and I thought, hang on a second, I'm not streaming or playing Disco Elysium. However, I thought, you know what, I'll give you a, a webcam video for today's CK2 session. Why not? So, uh, yes, in the last session, we ended... Let's turn the volume down in my earphones a little bit. We ended with a crusade being prepared for. King Johan decided it was time to flex his religious influence. And he, uh, well... Let's just say he kind of got carried away in his drunken state, ordering, I order you, I remember him saying, I order you, waving finger around. And uh, let's just say the old Pope didn't take too kindly to that, because uh, look at that. There's a minus 100 penalty for asking for a religious war, apparently. So now, for the first time in his existence, the Pope doesn't like him for... Nothing to do with the fact that we were asking for a religious war. I mean, that's that's for the benefit of all Christendom, of course. It was the way he asked for it, waving his finger and the smell of alcohol in his breath. That's what did it. So uh, that's a little bit of a that's a little bit of a boomer. Uh, yes. So uh, speaking of the crusade, shall we take a look at it? Oh, it starts on the thirty-first of March, nine sixty-nine. And I've done a little bit of reading about it, and some of it still went over my head. But, we can name a beneficiary, who is a member of our dynasty, who is not landed, and is over the age of 12. Uh, yeah, pass on that. Nobody fits the bill. This is our dynasty, right here. The only unlanded characters we have are either female... Maybe I think, for me, I think maybe females could be beneficiaries. I'm not quite sure, actually. Um, but anyway, all of our dynasty, uh, Seinhild, uh, Senrid and Beortnoth, are all under the age of 12. So we can't name them as beneficiaries. Which means that none of our dynasty members can share the spoils of this crusade, should there be any. Unless, of course... We take the stance to keep them for ourselves. Now, ordinarily, we wouldn't do this. We wouldn't be greedy. It's not about self-serving. It's not about, oh, I want all the power. But if nobody in identity can take it, then who else is there but me? So we can nominate our beneficiary for now. We can change our stance later. For a penalty, of course, with the opinion of the, with the Pope. But we need to think on this. Maybe over a few goblets of wine, perhaps. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. What, we're not going to get anybody age, age twelve between now and next year. Uh, you know, some kind of some sort of miracle. So it's just a case of thinking: Do we take it for ourselves, or do we just leave it to the other rulers' beneficiaries? And just do it for the and, and, and let them share in the spoils. We are just going to simply repel the Umiad from France, and that in itself is enough for us to be happy. Who knows? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it right before the crusade starts, and maybe his advisors <laughs> can uh, try and persuade Johan one way or another. But yeah, the first thing we are going to do for certain is pledge to the cause because we can contribute to the war chest all the people that join can contribute to the war chest so that the spoils can be shared out amongst the victors fingers crossed of course so um how much gold should we, should we donate to the church or the crusade rather um a small token of 179 gold pieces yeah small token um, kind of middling 358.1 gold pieces, which gives us a kind of modest uh, opinion change with the Pope, which we certainly need now. Or a grand gift befitting my station as one of the most religious, if not the most religious ruler 
in the realm. 716 gold. Hmm. Give me those an even bigger uh, change of opinion with the Pope. War chest increases by, of course, 17, 17, 716 gold. And a great big piety boost. It pains me personally to give away 760 gold pieces. <laughs> but Johan is a pious man. Johan, as I have said in the past, that doesn't see money as something to become attached to. It is merely a tool to be used for the greater good. And for the greater good in this occasion is to try to convince as many Catholic rulers to join this crusade as possible. So the bigger the war chest, the better chance more people will join. And of course we want to be seen as a, a leader amongst all the others here. And so donating this large amount of money for the course, get a good blessing from the Pope, and to lead by example. So say goodbye folks to our cathedral but this is far more important right now than uh, a cathedral so uh, it, it really does pay me but a massive donation to the war chest are you sure are you sure says the steward who actually I think is still his son yeah are you sure, Father, you want to donate 716 gold to the cause? It's going to leave us in a kind of a, kind of a shaky situation. Oh, he says, we're waving wine all over. Yeah, I'm bloody certain, man. Put it in, get, send it, send it, send it. Okay. <laughs> the coffers shall be bare if you take over, Senred. It's a big if, considering your status at this moment in time right so some housekeeping to take care of before we start the ball rolling then uh this shouldn't take long um minor titles minor titles actually before we get to minor titles um and realm trees what am i doing i don't know uh, yeah house johansson it's kind of not going too well for house johansson death cast out soon to be cast out if he dares to cheat on his wife i'm still praying and hoping he doesn't but he's sort of focus um you know we're trying for another baby just so that we can have at least one child that's relatively normal would be nice um the grandchildren fingers crossed will not be chips off the old block i, I mean obviously johan died it's not his fault he would he was the shining light the shining beacon uh, and, and he passed unfortunately but anyway there's teaching to be done is what i'm getting at here in a long and convoluted way uh this is our bastard granddaughter from our uh, from our from our daughter here and of course like any other bastard children we will raise them to be good christians that's as best we can do to ensure that they do not carry on their parents ways so teaching her a virtue and she picks up Chaste. They always pick up Chaste. Does it, is it alphabetical? Is it random? I don't know. Senrod, the eldest son of Senrod, of course. We haven't taught him. We haven't. We haven't, we haven't uh, taught him a virtue yet. So uh, let's do it. Kind. Ah, oh, a kind little child. We like that. So more teachings to be done. More teachings carried out uh, right that's fine we've done eight to the war to the old crusade effort right quickly then laws and titles first of all we've seen enough of people now to, to kind of get a handle on who we want to promote to the final few uh, honorary titles keeper of the swans our daughter-in-law of course Senna Shaw one of the highest uh, Ranking unofficial titles. Organization, organizer of the feasts and domestic entertainment. A key role and post that is most prestigious shall be given to Eastman of York, son of. I've forgotten his name already. His father, Adred, that's the one. There's a show of no ill will following, you know, the takeover that we kind of engaged in. Uh, he's now a spy master 
and he's 19 and he's zealous he's showing good promise uh, in fact we're also going to teach him a virtue as well because he's already got a few uh, a couple rather and so he becomes a seneschal we've taught him a virtue and he also becomes charitable so i mean look at that he's turning out to be a fine young man like his father before him we've almost taken him under our wing almost like i suppose a well, kind of a you know a, a family member of sorts even a son you could say <laughs> why not my others have flipping my other is, is falling by the wayside so uh <clears throat> yeah taking him under our wing right laws One night, while slopping wine over himself, uh, he decided, his old uh, Johan, to uh, declare to his vassals that he thinks that given the track record of men around here and their seductive ways, there is a fine specimen of a woman in East Anglia who fights most gallantly jewels if she needs to and is honorable and reliable and gets things done and she's religious too so why is it that we are so hell-bent on keeping succession strictly to males when right before my very eyes i see a woman performing far better than many men across this land. And I for I decree from this day forward that women can rule too at the most highest rank of our country. And he was expecting there to be a massive uproar amongst his vassals. No! What are you, are you crazy? It's the wine talking. Women can't rule. And uh, that didn't happen at all, rather strangely. For if you see here, and look at the vassal opinions, pleased by succession law changed. Pleased by succession law change. Pleased by succession law change. Well, oh, oh, actually, Sandra's outraged because he's next in line, potentially. But uh, uh, you, uh, pleased, yes. Oh, I'm pleased as well, yes. Uh, is that so? Once again, it seems that uh, Johann's wisdom sways his vassals. Whichever way he votes for the next next to ruler, people vote the same way he does. He says, women shall rule. Everybody, yeah, women shall rule. Yeah, if he says it, we agree. He's the wisest man out in the world. If he says it's a good idea, it's bound to be a good idea. So uh, there you go. Women can rule too, as uh, as of now. So, we'll, so that just opens up in case there's no eligible males, for instance. Because if my son ends up being a cheater and he is boom, disinherited in terms of at least the English throne, who is going to be put on there? Who is the Duchess or the Duke across the land that we have the most faith in if it's not our own son? It's Sir Aelfgif of East Anglia. And, uh, yeah. She's available to be voted for, should we need to take that emergency measure. Right, I think there's probably one more law we can change as well, and that is the religious revocation title mandate. And of course, my council members being loyal will uh, vote my way. As they always do. Council members, dukes and duchesses, I mean, good old uh, Johan has, has them all wrapped around his little finger, doesn't he? And there was one last little change that I've kind of forgotten. One more commander. It's Edbert of Yordale. A giant, a skilled tactician and brave. He is the brother of our spy master, Eastman. He is the other son of Adred. <laughs> and so uh, we're 14 Marshall and, and, and those uh, traits. He would make a fine commander. So there he comes. 
Okay, so that's uh, sorry, it's taken a while, but uh, a bit of a bit, a bit of acting skills there, you see. Uh, we're off to, and ready to rock and roll. So we're going to tick down now the time on two speed because hey, why why not uh, build up the old uh, tension here as we progress towards our crusade, and just see what ticks down in the next twelve months as we prepare ourselves for war. Somerset has declared Somerset claim on Gloucester War. Realm Peace is finished. Safe to say. Right. You have your little petty wars now because give it, give it over just over a year's time we'll all be united under one banner. The banner of the Catholic faith. And your petty squabble shall be put aside for the greater good. And in the meantime, King Johan is trying in earnest to wean himself off wine. Seems he is very susceptible to a drink or two. His second time he's become drunkard. You know, as soon as that wine passes his lips, ooh, it hits him. It's his refrain for so many years, and with the death of so many of his friends and close family members, it was getting too much to him. He just, I'll just have a sip just to help me sleep. My, my son is dead. My daughter is a nun. Oh, my friends are dropping dead. I'm 52. My end is nigh, possibly. Uh, I'm seeing all these people around me die. I'll just have a quick sip of wine. And then one sip became a gulp. And then one gulp became a goblet. And then, well, you know what happened after that. The conversion of Silesia. Another success. They have been converted to the Catholic faith. A group of priests sent by the King of Germany have performed a great ritual during which they have converted the entire population of Silesia alongside High Chief Unidrog II and many of his vassals. God once again has touched a new people. Embrace them. Welcome them. Righteous imprisonment. Oh dear. Just tick these down. My son is having a, a change of uh, council members. I dread to think who this is. It is Ichvif of Huis. He's fabricating a claim on the county of Wilshire. Is that enough to imprison the man? It's not the most heinous of crimes. I mean, fabrication is fabrication, I suppose, but it's not plotting murder. And it's not against my direct family members, so we'll just ask him to stop. Well, not us personally, of course. We're very busy. One of our council members, probably the spy master, has sent him a missive. New college in the College of the Cardinals, and our best rank is still uh, is Eilfgar, 398. It's looking unlikely that we're going to get somebody in the college. Unless, of course, we welcome... Is it time to start trying that now? I mean, we're 52. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that we might be able to oversee this. We've started a crusade. We've donated lavishly to a crusade in terms of the, the, the treasury and stuff. We've created a new church within Leeds. We've expelled cynicism from the ducal level across the land. We have conquered the Isle of Man and ousted a pagan. Another thing that we could achieve? Putting uh, one of our bishops in the College of Cardinals. We ain't going to get our cathedral, but we can continue to do other things. So if we were to do that, what we need to uh, what we need to do is we need an Italian cultured an Italian cultured high learning individual to come across to our court. Then we need to make them. A bishop of one of our uh, of one of our bishoprics, then that should give him a real good chance. 
Now, to, to try and orchestrate that, it's going to require a little bit of research and, 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 and a little bit of scouting down in Italy or in the search feature, which I'm not sure how to do just yet, but I will do it before the next session. Before the start of the crusade, maybe. But, yeah. I mean, we could go straight to the direct vas uh Obviously, it can't be a landed person. It has to be a non-landed person. Hold a grand tournament. Ah, no. So, like this guy here. Pietro. If I took off... No, why should I leave? I'm in Rome. And indeed you are. Uh, yeah, so we got we got to literally go around the entire of Italy looking for Italian court members that may want to uh, come over and be a bishop. So, yeah, we'll do some research before the next session, and I'm going to try and see if we can kind of get ourselves a potential cardinal. Because the cardinal voting, it's got like certain traits that help. Age is a big thing as well. If the older you are, the, the more score you get. Um, and being Italian is one of them. Also, being in Rome is another boost. So we'd have to have him be our court chaplain as well, ideally, and have him... Hang on. Let me see if it works. Sorry, I'm, just, I'm playing with things here. So, our uh, Bishop Ainfrith. Bishop Ainfrith's score at the moment is 355. So, if we put him in Rome, improving religious relations, does he go up? 355. Yes, he does look like 455. He's in Rome does work right okay so this is a few hoops to jump through but this is the plan that we need to engage with we need to bring an Italian man over we need to have him be a court chaplain then be a bishop then put him in Rome and only then with a bit of extra coin thrown in as well to boost his uh, to boost his um, chances through a campaign Shall we get him into the College of the Cardinals? That is the plan. <laughs> Can we get... What is she doing? Fabricator came on the Duchy of Mercia. Um, she's probably got good reason, actually. Normally when she does something, she does something for the right reasons. And it wouldn't surprise me if the, if the Duke of Mercia has suddenly turned to some kind of heresy. Let's take a look, shall we? Is it you? It's you. What have you done? He's cruel, he's greedy, he's proud. We're not seeing anything obvious. His wife's zealous even. There's a bit of deceit there. Is it just because he's a, is it just because he's the neighbour and she wants to she's seeking a bit of power? She does have a bit of a deceitful streak in her. Maybe a bit she's also got a bit of paranoia. Maybe she's heard some rumours about that he's planning something and she's trying to get in there first. Nah, I don't, uh, we can't turn a blind eye to this. We can't turn a blind eye just because She's our daughter-in-law. Got ask her to stop the plot. Right, onwards we go. If he was even remotely like, you know, got a couple. It's got a couple of vices, but it's nothing like. We must stop this man. But if there was, we would let her continue her, her, her continue with the plot. Very good, very good. I know, I know, it's fine. It's okay. It's okay. Do, 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 do. It's a calm before the storm, this people. It's a calm before the storm. Something is a brewing. Let's take a look. 109% strength. So this is our side. This is our side. Total strength, 109%. This is the other side, the enemy side. Only 91. Oh dear. It's not looking good for the old uh, Umiyad, is it? We have the stronger. Look at that. It's forever increasing. It's forever increasing. More rulers pledging their coin to the cause. It pleases us greatly to see it. And their strength is falling. Uh, falling. Our strength is rising. Rising. 
Catholic rulers from across the land pledging their service to this cruise. Yes, we shall. We shall pledge our banners to the cause. And it continues to increase. It's looking good. It's looking 115%. 86 dropping like a stone. Oh, this is good. And look at us. First. First on the list. Up front and centre. Oh, yes. It's happening, folks. Meanwhile, in Norway... Favours? Hang on. What have you done for favours? What have you done for favours, Zenrid? Our spy master, of course, is keeping tabs. He's got a couple of rivals. Why? Are any of these married to these? No. No, no, no kids. A four-year-old child. It doesn't mean anything. It's not a bastard child, thankfully. How about you? Betrothed to a young whippersnapper. Helga the Proud. No bastard children. Age two. Oh, it's your awesome. Oh, it's you. It's her. It's hell. It's her. Your awesome. But remember, you're also awesome, put down in Cornwall. Our former steward. Phew. But that's no. So there's still no. There's no evidence that anything's happening. Other than comings and goings and lots of notes being passed and whatever else. But that's that's fine. But if anything happens more than that. It will not be good, I tell you that much. Okay. I'm actually quite. I'm, I'm, I, I could sit here just watching this bloody. Uh, this. This. Uh, oops, a dizzy. This. Uh, oh, another no, interesting fact. Bear, bear with me. I could just sit here watching this. War, there's this war chest ticking over, our strength increasing, the other side's strength decreasing. It's filling me with a great happiness just to sit here and watch this. A dedication to religious pursuits has been noticed and we have gained a new friend, Bishop of Exeter. Down here in, uh, in Brittany, the former king passed away a couple of years ago now and uh, this little child has become king, King Indulf of Brittany and it's a really bizarre situation but basically his mother was married no his mother was the daughter of the former king and she was the only legitimate child so for whatever reason it must be agnatic it must be agnatic only the kingdom of uh, Brittany no it's not it's kind of kind but anyway Somehow and somewhere that escaped my kind of comprehension, this child, who is uh, of Scottish descent, he's the nephew of the current King of Scotland, has become the King of Brittany. Very strange. It must have something to do with the tribal nature of the places because I couldn't track it through the family tree how this has happened. She's married to him. She's married, she's had a child with this guy, and that's why he's here, because she was the legitimate daughter of the former king, I get that. But then she's actually married to this guy, who is a chief of Lapland, and is married to him. No indication he was ever married to that man. So, it must be tribal stuff, I don't know, it's confusing. Um, but yeah, anyway. Scottish child is the king of Brittany. I mean, I think they're both Celtic culture anyway, aren't they? So they fit like a glove. Where's cultures? Yeah, Breton Celtic, Scottish Celtic. Yeah, it's all in. It's all inter interwoven. Okay. Oh, Duke Herbert of Lothian. Oh, 
Oh no! Do you know what I can't? Oh, he's, he's, he's unified it. It's unified. His father was Duke Beorithric, which means that his uncle was Aedwulf, was the homosexual guy who we kind of grew to like because of the fact that he uh, openly burned a heathen at the stake. It kind of got in our good books that. Uh, he's slain in personal combat just recently by a bishop. The Bishop of Lindisfarne, no less. Let me see this Bishop of Flippin' Lindisfarne. Who the hell is he? That he's uh, capable... <laughs> that he's capable... How do we see this? Uh, that he's capable of slaying... Oh, look at him. He's all bloody and battered. Four Marshal. Sixteen personal combat, though. Well. Bloody hell fire. Strange but true, people. Strange but true. Another cardinal uh, promoted in the old college. It's, it's, it's actually, uh, yeah. It's bugging me now. I want a cardinal. I want a cardinal. We could actually just do it by just paying money. I mean, it's an extra hundred. In fact, if you just press control and that, it goes to as much as you need. 167 gold and boom, we're there. But it's not a guarantee because before the next election takes place somebody one of these has to die i'm assuming um and by that time this might not be enough somebody else might take this spot so it's a bit of a risk and it's a lot of money to risk so uh, we're not gonna do it and not only that but the the whole reason for getting an italian is because when they become a cardinal the next election after that is to become the Pope. And again, Italian get the bonus points. So, yes, we may get a Cardinal, but that doesn't guarantee we're going to get a Pope. So, I think we'll stick with our original plan. Right, how long to go? 48 days. Let's count it down together and stop just short so that uh, Johan's advisors can have a word in his shell and determine whether or not we are going to take this for ourselves. Okay, so we're off to the we're off to the monastery one last time. Say our prayers, gather the thoughts of the people before we personally saddle our horse alongside our son, keeping him out of trouble, and our marshal, Mr. Proud Frenchman, and the three of us, holy warriors, will march forth to battle. So 115%. Has that dropped? That's dropped, hasn't it? 86. 117. 32 grand, though. Very nice. Did 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 Hey, raiders! I've, I've arrived to loot and pillage. Kent! What? What is this? A saint in heaven. Blessed Arpad Zolta was a true exemplar of the Christi uh, Christian faith, living a pious and moderate life. In a grand announcement, Pope Nicholas II has decided to canonize Zolta, the understanding. Many tales are told about the saint and the feasts, or the feats that he did in life. It was often said that Saint Zolta was so understanding of others that he would be able to practically read their minds. Despite his gift, he never used it for evil and was truly a servant of God, blessing those in his presence. It is a great honour for the family of the blessed saint. May we all aspire to become as pious as him. Blessed be his name, an inspiration to us all. Of course, he would be dead. He died not long ago, actually. He was Hungarian, right? Arpad is un Hungary. Yeah, and they only recently came over to Catholicism, not so long ago. They were pagan, yeah? He was probably a pagan sympathiser. One of them was, anyway. I'm sure of it. But nonetheless... We are not, uh, you know, we're not jealous. This is not our, this is our way. Of course, a saint, this is a time for celebration. This is time for celebration for us all. Right before the crusade starts, this is a sign. 
Truly, this is a blessing. And as we tick down, four, three, hey, we'll stop on three days. Why not? Three days to go. 116 percent. 85%, 32,000 in the war chest, 19 artifacts, 21,000 prestige and 8,000 piety to spread amongst, spread amongst the, uh, the, the, the candidates and the, the participators should we be successful. And, uh, oh, you bet your bottom dollar, we shall be successful. 358 gold pieces. We're going to probably need some Jewish money. I'd say so. Should have thought about that when donating large swaths of cash, Johan, shouldn't you? Yes, you should. But he was drunk when he did it. Uh, pay, pay the money, he said. Pay the, what, what about the army you're supposed to be taking down then to, to do the... Ah, we'll find money. Okay, not a problem. So there you go, folks. What do you think? Take the spoils for ourselves in the absence of a beneficiary? Or no? Leave it to somebody else's beneficiary. In the next session, we start the crusade in earnest. We raise the troops, we sound the battle horn, we saddle our horses, and we go south. We catch some boats, we sail across to France, which is now unified after the revolt's finished, and we head to Aquitaine. And we repel these heathens from sacred Catholic lands. Until then, see you soon.